Nothing like sitting in the garden and having a coffee. What an incredible way to wake up. Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome to my garden. So I live in the Pacific Northwest, but I have spent the last few weeks living on the central coast of California. And when I arrived, I was so excited to see that in my front garden, I had several dye plants that have been able to grow beautifully in the California sun. So today on Color Quest, I thought it might be fun just to spend a little time to see what we can make from the plants in my garden. So join me as we snip away, do a little pruning, and fill the dye pod with some local California garden goodies. So my home here is quite small, it's just a little bungalow. But the front yard has several plants that are dye producing. And so let's walk in, I'm gonna quickly show them to you and then we'll get to doing some harvesting. As we walk in, there's just a few plants here. We have a beautiful bird of paradise, which needs a little pruning. But then we have milkweed, and we have hibiscus, We have a beautiful lavender, and over here, an incredible yarrow. Now all of these, with maybe the exception of milkweed, produce dye. So let's start taking some pieces of these very mature bushes and see what we can do. So one thing that I've noticed about this garden is that most of these, if not all of these flowering dye plants are also attractive to bees and other insects, important insects. So one thing I'm going to do is be very conscientious about cutting back as if I were pruning, taking more of the leaves and stems and flower parts that have already bloomed and are fading, and making sure that our insect friends continue to have a place to enjoy and do what they're supposed to do with these beautiful plants. So as you forage and are out there, always remember the animal friends and how we need to share the environment with them. Let's start with the lavender. So this particular variety of lavender has several names. It can be called Mexican, Spanish, French lavender. And interestingly enough, one of the other names that it is called is butterfly lavender. And what I love about that is that this area is home to part of the large migration of monarch butterflies that come through this area as they move from north to south and vice versa. And I have seen several monarchs and monarch caterpillars in my garden since I've been here. So I'm going to be calling these butterfly lavender. So I'm going to harvest off both the buds as well as the leaves and stems and put them all together in a pot and we'll see what we get from this butterfly lavender.
So here's a little treasure. I have the remnants of a chrysalis with the butterfly that's already left. And then here is one that is working its way from caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly. So it's super cool to see the two right next to each other and know that pretty soon we're gonna have a butterfly. So I already posted a video on using hibiscus as a dye source. I didn't have hibiscus available to me in the Pacific Northwest, so I used dried hibiscus flowers and tea to get a beautiful red pinkish color. I'm going to see what these peach hibiscus will bring to the dye pot. Curious, I had somebody ask me what I thought peach hibiscus might do, so let's find out. I've also collected fallen hibiscus flowers for the last few weeks, so I'm going to be using a series of dried flowers like this, so I can leave the flowers that are in full bloom for us to enjoy and all of our insect friends. So here's what I've been collecting. Just gonna be dried petals. I'm only gonna be making a small pot to sample to see what kind of color I'm gonna get. So I don't need a lot. These have been picked up from the ground. This one was just about finished, so I went ahead and picked that one, but left the majority of those beautiful flowers over there. So probably the star of this garden is the yarrow. It is in full bloom and it is really prolific. And so a pruning actually is going to be a good thing for it. Yarrow is a medicinal plant and it's widely used as a natural remedy for all kinds of ailments. So having it in the garden has multiple purposes. For me personally, this is all going to be in the dye pot and I know already that it creates a vibrant color and since there are so many of them, I know that it will be a great place for me to look to yellows for my dye practice. And it is a butterfly attractor as well, so it's really beautiful to have that natural cycle where you're sharing the nature that is around you with the animals that are also using it. Really, it's spectacular. So this bush is called a milkweed and I looked up this variety and I thought it was pretty interesting to see that one of the names that it's called is Mexican butterfly weed. However, it's beautiful and it's always filled with beautiful blossoms. I do believe it attracts butterflies. I also saw a caterpillar, a monarch caterpillar, earlier this season on this bush. So I'm going to take some. 
I've done some reading about milkweed to see if it will produce dye. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I will get, but it's always worth, you know, experimenting and seeing what nature might provide. So with such beautiful orange blossoms, I'm guessing milkweed or Mexican butterfly weed is going to surprise us in the dye plot. One of my absolute favorite wildflowers in California is the California poppy. And I had a big open space here in the garden and I decided to buy some poppies so that I could plant them in this now new dye garden that I didn't actually plan to ever have. If you drive anywhere in the springtime in California or most anywhere, you will see fields of these along the highways when you're hiking, and you shouldn't be picking wildflowers out and about. So instead, I decided that by adding them to my garden, which a lot of people do, I'd have access to them. So I went out and I bought three plants from my local nursery and just planted them in this garden and already harvested a few petals that fell and cut off the brown or the fading leaves. And I will put those into the dye pot. They grow like crazy here and they look absolutely amazing. So I'm excited for this to fill out over the next few years so that I know that I can always have a little California poppy in my dye pot. I wanted to show you my neighbor's California poppies. They have a hybrid, they're a yellow-orange hybrid. They're absolutely stunning. This is what I'm hoping is going to end up eventually happening over in my garden. But you see gardens like this everywhere in my neighborhood. I just love it. So just wanted you to see how pretty it looks. So coming here was such a surprise to have dye plants already in the garden. And it got me to thinking about the day when I can start planting my own dye garden. That is a big dream of mine. I know that in the future I'm going to be able to start planting certain dye plants that are fantastic for the dye pot and it's a nice supplement to what you can also do when you go foraging. So if you have the space and the interest, maybe start off with a couple of plants and just put them in some pots out in your back yard or garden and test it out. I'm gonna do just that now with some Cosmo seeds. And these were given to me by an artist who I absolutely adore. She lives in Maine and she harvested Cosmo seeds. She sent these to me and I'm super stoked to sow these seeds here in the California garden. Cosmos are a dye plant and I absolutely love them. They're, they might be my second favorite wildflower. They are beautiful because they seed back every year and if you're successful in growing them, you will just have huge bushes of them basically and they can be all different kinds of colors. So we're going to sow some of these for the future and see if maybe next year we'll be pulling some Cosmos into the dye pot. So these are the seeds from the Cosmo flowers themselves. We're just going to gently place these underneath very shallow 
a bit of soil and in this garden we have stones on top so we'll see what happens and maybe in I don't know a month or two we'll have some sprouts and maybe some cosmos if not we'll just try again next year so thank you for joining me here in my California garden as we took a look at the five different plants that I was lucky enough to already have planted here as well as hopefully next year having some cosmos to add to the list so what i think is so special about foraging for plants that are local to where you live is that the colors themselves are an expression of the environment that they're living in and so they are very unique to that particular plant and that particular area where it is living so take note of that Keep your eyes out within your own garden. You might have something in your space that you didn't even know would make a wonderful dye material. And before I head back to the Pacific Northwest, I'm going to take you on a California coastal dye search, and that is for plants here in the central coast of California that are found along the coastline that are readily available, many of which are invasive and overgrowing. So join me next week as we take a look at California coastal dye plants. Thanks for spending some time with me in my garden, California. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now, see you next week. Uh, orange, oh, he's gone. Uh, well, if anyone saw in that clip the orange part attached to its leg, those are called its pollen pants. Thank you, bees. Oh, that's a spider, I don't like it.